Private John A. Veach, 515055, A Company, Hut 6A, 14 Reserve London Regiment, London Scottish, Hazley Down Camp, Winchester, Sunday noon. My dear mother, just a few lines to let you know I am quite well and getting on very well indeed. On Friday I went before the captain at headquarters and was passed all right and at 2.30 was rigged out. I will now give you a list of what we got starting at the feet and working up. Two pairs of boots, three pairs of socks, one pair of hose tops, one pair of putties, one pair of flashes, two pairs of drawers, one pair of trousers, three top shirts, one kilt, one khaki apron, one thick cardigan, one tunic, one Glengarry cap, one pair of shoulder numerals, one cap badge, head comforter, two boot brushes, one button brush, one hair brush, one clothes brush, one button stick, one housewife hold all, including fork, spoon, knife, toothbrush, housewife, laces, and all these odds and ends, and one great coat. Everything I got was brand new. Then we got all our equipment, including equipment felt, entrenching, tool and iron, two ammunition pouches, mess tin, water bottle, haversack, hold all, and kit bag. I had not time to write a letter on Friday, nor yet yesterday. We were at headquarters at quarter to nine in the morning, and were on squad drill in the forenoon. At 1.15 we left headquarters, about 30 of us, and took the tube to Charing Cross. Then we changed there and went to Waterloo, and then got the train from there to Winchester. We then got out and got on a small local train to Shawford, a few miles from Winchester. A staff officer brought us down and we marched from the station to camp. When we arrived it was just tea time and the rest of the Scottish all cheered us very much. Twelve of us are in A Company and the rest are in G Company. We got a decent tea and the tea in a big cup, or rather bowl. Our beds are about six inches off the floor on small trestles and four blankets in greatcoat. I slept very well last night and was up at 6.30 this morning. My word, it is a hurry in the morning. We were at church parade at 8.30 and had a fine service in the church hall. We were led to the hut by a pipe band. It is a fearful place for mud, about three to four inches deep, but the boots are A1. Gordon's lot are here, the 20th London Royal Garrison Artillery Army Service Cops and herself. It is one of the biggest camps in England. We had hut inspection and kit inspection after church parade. For breakfast, we had one and a half large herrings, bread and butter, jam and tea. For dinner today, we had mutton, boiled potatoes, stewed turnips and green peas, and then jam roll. You require to buy a lot of outside food, but it appears reasonable in price. Tomorrow I'm to get my first inoculation. I am off till Wednesday afternoon. On Fridays we get paid here, seven shillings per week. The chaps here and in this hut are very superior chaps and help you every way they can. I have no more news just now, but will let you know as soon how things are going. Hoping you are all well, as this leaves me the same. Yours with love, John Alex. Private John Alex, Bologna, France, Thursday. My dear dad, just a few lines to let you know I have crossed safely after a very pleasant voyage. This letter is not going through the censor's hands, so I will give you all the details. An officer and sergeant brought over our draft and the sergeant says he will take our letters back in his pocket and post them when he reaches England, thus avoiding the censor altogether. Of course, I will only manage one letter this way, but it is a very fine chance, and I will give you all of my news, none of which I would be able to give if the censor had the letter. Well, starting at the beginning, things have happened as follows. At eight o'clock last night, the draft paraded and got a fine supper provided by our officers. It was a really high-rate dinner. After that, we paraded at 20 past nine and got a short address by the colonel and then the pipes played us off. The whole battalion turned out to send us off and it was the heartiest send-off any draft has ever had. They followed us almost to Shawford Station. At Shawford, we got a train about 11 o'clock. All our engaged carriages soon got filled up, so six of us got a first-class carriage. You know one of those carriages with the armrests, etc. All the other chaps were eight in a carriage and a third class at that. So we started excellently. Instead of going to Waterloo, London, we went through Guildford and straight down into Folkestone without a stop or change. The civil service sent off a draft and played Old Lang Syne for us as the train moved out of Shawford and at Winchester, the London Irish also played Old Lang Syne. As you see, we were very popular. 
There were Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans, Civil Service, Royal Field Artillery, London Irish, St Pancras Rifles, Royal Irish Fusiliers and London Scottish on the train. Well, we landed at Folkestone at ten past three this morning and lined up on the quay. From there, we were marched off to a rest camp near the docks and got breakfast, clean up and rest. About seven o'clock, we reached away from the rest camp and went to the quay. After hanging about for a while, we got on our transport. It was a huge paddle steamer and had on board over 2,000 troops. There were three transports, one behind the other, ours being the first. The Scottish, I think, were favoured. We got the middle of the boat on the top deck. We left at 20 past nine and got into Bologna at 20 past 10. Exactly one hour we took to cross. The sea was as calm as the guil, not a ripple on it. We arrived in Bologna at 20 past 10. After the regiments had sorted themselves out, we were all marched to a rest camp, where, at the present moment, I am. We marched through Bologna to get to this camp, and I must say I am not at all struck with either the country or the folk in it. The French soldiers look so untidy and not at all smart. The tram cars here are absolutely wicked. Perth cars are king over all cars to them. They resemble nothing short of buggies. Well, we got here, and ever since we came here, we've done nothing but draw rations and eat, 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 all the long, long day. We're in tents here for the day, but tonight at 10 o'clock, unless otherwise ordered, we move off to the station. We have an 18 hours railway journey ahead of us, going from here to have. We are all A1 and the best of spirits, Scottish always to the fore. The French folk call us Scotchies here. As I have no more news just now, must close. Hoping you're all well and to write to you soon with my new address. Yours with love, John Alex. Private John Alex, 515055, First London Scottish, 14 Camp, Number 7, Infantry Base Depot, Le Havre, British Expeditionary Force, France, Monday. My dear mother, just a few lines to let you know I am all right and quite well. I wrote to Netta on Saturday, so have no news since then, except that we leave here tonight. I am very lucky indeed, as you will see as I go on. Instead of going to the London Scottish in trenches, we are still to be London Scottish, but attached to the Royal Engineers in an entrenching battalion. Our whole draft is to go on this job, and I hear it may be anything up to three months, so in that case it will be quite nice. We do not know definitely how long it may be, but this we have been told, and that is that. We are to be with an entrenching battalion, which is manual work behind the line. We are to be somewhere in Belgium, but you will hear from me where we are in due course. We leave here tonight at six o'clock, so are all right. We go from Havre, but the precise place to which we are going is not yet known. I know more about it than you ones do, and you can take it from me that it is quite a good job, and we are all rejoicing over it. Until you get my new address, just write to here, and the letters and parcels will be forwarded to me. No doubt food will be scarcer up the line than here, so food and sweets will be welcomed. I have really no more news and I'm only writing to let you know all is well. Heat here yesterday and today is awful, almost tropical. Well, I must now close as I have plenty to see to, but will write soon again. Hoping you are all well, with love to all. Your affectionate son, John Alex. Private John Alex, 515055, 1st London Scottish, attached, 1st Entrenching Battalion. British Expeditionary Force, Thursday evening. My dear mother, just a few lines to let you know I have arrived at my new place and I'm quite well. We had a very long journey in the train lasting nearly two days and have safely arrived at camp. We are a very long way from the line and all we can hear is the dull thud of the distant guns. I don't think there is any chance of anything here except perhaps the aircraft and the Germans will be too afraid to cross our lines for fear of they know what. We are absolutely safe here, no fear of anything whatsoever. I thought when we left Havre that we were for the front line, but thank goodness we were more lucky and have come here. We can see aerial bombardments away in the very far distance, and from this distance it is quite fascinating to watch them, but it wouldn't be if we were near at hand. We see countless numbers of airplanes chasing about in the sky, and my word, they do go at some lick. We are in tents here, six per tent, so we are very comfortable, and two blankets per man. There is a Belgian village just beside us and we can go into it when we like, but to go into any bigger village we require a pass. I have not had time to go yet, but will do so sometime soon. We're in Belgium, but beyond that I cannot give as it won't work. 
We were told today that we can name Belgium, but nothing more. This I can tell you is that we are safe as houses here and nothing whatever to worry us. We are here indefinitely so that from all appearance here seems to be A1. We will be here until our battalion is thoroughly cut up and needs men very urgently. It may be months or only weeks, but we are all hoping it will be for months, as many as they like. I'll now tell you what we did today. Morning parade at 9.30 with all pack, rifle, ammunition, etc. We got an inspection by the Argyle officer first, then the colonel, and then dismissed and put all our stuff in our tent and then had kit inspection. After that we were dismissed and nothing more till two o'clock. We got bully beef stew for dinner today. At two we went out in our shirt sleeves and dug little ditches round our tents to run the rainwater away. The weather here is warm and we are very comfortable and plenty room to move about. Well ma'am, I have no more news just now so must close but will write to you soon again. Hoping you are well. Yours with love, John Alex. Tuesday. My dear mother, just a few lines to let you know I am quite well and getting on alright. Since coming here, no post has yet come to our camp. We seem so shut out of the world, not having any news in it. I suppose they will come with a rush when they do come. As you will notice, there is no address at the top of this letter. There has been a dust-up here with censorship and a great noise over it, and addresses have to be included in the text of the letter and not put either at the beginning or end of the letter. My address is still the same. It is 1st Battalion, London Scottish, attached 1st Entrenching Battalion, British Expeditionary Force. We are also forbidden to mention what we do or what we are going to do on anything of our camp at all, or what we see. Taking all that away, there is nothing left to write about save how we are keeping. Tonight we have been on some job in our tent, that of looking our shirts for strange gentlemen. All of us were lucky, one chap caught six. He headed the list, and I got three. We looked shirt, kilt and tunic. One cannot help it here, everyone is the same. The very ground seems infested. To use a Scottishism, every one was like a barley puckle. We have to be most careful with what we see in our letters. Censorship is so strict, and one will be punished for the least thing out of the ordinary. Yesterday at dinner time, when we stopped for dinner, I spotted a farm tune nearby, so off I skipped to it for a grub. The farmer's folk were just starting dinner, so he told me to have dinner with them. They spoke Flemish, with a little French, but no English. I had a nice dinner of pork, fried potatoes, bread and butter, coffee and sweet milk. As I have no more news, must now stop. Hoping to hear from you soon. With love to all, your affectionate son, John Alex. Private John A. Veach, 515055. Number 2 Platoon, A Company, Thursday. My dear mother, as I have a few minutes to spare this forenoon, I am to write you a short letter and give you all the news I have since I wrote last. We have been on a couple of jobs which were very interesting, but now and again slightly eerie. They were both quite safe, and as I have said, interesting, so I rather enjoyed them. We have shifted again into another trench, not the front line, and still further back from our last one. We will be here for a good few days. The same lot of us, five in number, are in fine dugout. This is the same dugout that I was in when I entered the trenches for my first time and you may remember how comfortable I told you they were. Those who have had it while we have been up the line have greatly improved it by putting in new shelves and also wire shelves for putting our equipment etc on. It is very comfy and all of us are happy. It is a nice warm dugout. Well last night after coming down here I got your parcel sent off on the 20th instant and your letter of the 22nd. You always manage to write me so long, interesting letters. I will let you know in good time about further clothing. At present, I have every single thing I should like in my pack. Please do not send out any till you hear from me, but I think we will soon be home, judging from our present good successes. The flash lamp is a splendid idea of yours, and will be one of the most useful things I have. Just try and imagine us entering a pitch batch drug out after midnight. Everyone says, Ain't no one got a match to light the candle, and then you think of the fumbling about that takes place. You can see how useful a flash lamp would be and will be under such circumstances. The candles are not broken at all, not one of them. 
They will last for a long, long time. The biscuits, sweets, chocolate and honey are also most acceptable. The honey is a fine appetizer. The sweets and chocolate have a short and gay life after they land here. Sweets are quite unobtainable, so you know how much I value them. As I have no more news, I must now close, but will write soon again. Hoping you're all well, and with fondest love to all. Your affectionate son, John Arx. Private John A. Veach, 515055, Number 2 Platoon, A Company, 18th October, 1917. My dear Dad, just a few lines this afternoon to let you know I'm quite well and getting on all right. I thank Ma'am very much for her letter received yesterday, dated 9th of October. I also thank Netta for her very nice postcard of 11th of October, received this morning, and Ma'am for the People's Journey of 13th of October, an advertiser for the tent, received today at noon. I am very pleased to receive them all and to know that all at home were well. I sent you a postcard this morning as I had not time to write a letter and get it off by post time. I am pleased you are getting rid of your fall of snow, but the wet will greatly hinder you. I am sorry you have not managed to secure the potato crop, but I hope the frost will keep off long enough so that the ground will dry up and you get them in. Captain Norman Dixon was in my class at school, and from what I remember of him he was a very fine fellow. I am very sorry to hear that he has been killed. Also, Alex Murray wounded and Robert Powie as well. The dugouts we are in are warmer than the tents, and we are very pleased to have them in the front line, as some parts of the front have none and the chaps have to sleep out. So you see, we are very lucky indeed, and we are most thankful. The trenches are very dry just now, having dried up after a short wet spell. We are having glorious weather just now, but of course it is cold and chilly through the night. But we wrap up well. I have no colds at all, so you see I am looking after myself well. I am still in the front line, but will very soon now be out of it for some little time. There is no need to worry over me, as I am quite safe and well. I hope you are long to be back home. I should think this affair out here should soon be over now, at least I hope so. There is absolutely no news I can write from here, as I cannot get any, as you can no doubt guess. Food is not bad, we get porridge and tea every morning early, and it is very good, and we look forward to getting it. Then breakfast, dinner and tea follow just when you fancy them. Must close for the present, as I have no more news. Hoping you are all well, and with fond love to all at home, your ever-loving son, John Alex. Private John A. Beach, 515-055, No. 2 Platoon, A Company, 28th October, 1917. My dear mother, I thank you ever so much for your very nice long letter of the 21st, received safely last night. I was delighted to know all of you were well and that Netta and Agnes Jane were all right. I am quite well and free from all colds, absolutely. If anyone in civil life had told me what we could go through without getting colds or anything else, I would not have believed them. It is very cold at nights now, but our leather jerkins and other clothing keep us, to use a vulgar expression, as warm as piss. It is a pity about C.B. Robertson. Poor chap. If I remember correctly, he was an officer in the artillery. It is terrible that a number of pit lockery men who have been killed lately. We are still in the trenches, but not on the front line, so you don't need to worry over me, as I am quite safe. We have changed our dugout now, and the one I am now in is the best one I have ever been in, and is quite warm. It holds a great number of chaps and is fully 30 feet below the surface, so it is a grand place and resembles a fine big house. We will soon be out at our rest again and back in huts again. It won't be long now. I have not much news at all to write about as trench life is monotonous. I got a letter from London today and it has been cats and dogs there for a whole week on end. Lightfoot is in the Royal Flying Corps now, so he too is away from Mrs Simmons. Everyone seems to be in the army. I only hope this will all soon finish up and I get back home. It is high time too. Well, Mother, I will write you a letter very soon again with all the news. Must close for the present. Hoping all of you are well, and with fond love to all at home, your most ever-loving son, John Alex. Private John A. Veach, 515055, Number 2 Platoon, A Company, 23rd November, 1917. My dear Mother, I have again got an opportunity to write you a few lines, so I am to give you all my news. When writing yesterday, I said I did not know when I could get my next one off, and the same thing still holds good. Just for the present, things are a lot uncertain, as we get them off just when we can. 
so that is why I am writing so often, merely to let you know all as well. Thanks very much for your letter of the 14th, duly received. I was delighted to hear from you and to know that all of you had got settled down after the bustle and were quite well. I am still at the same old place and quite comfy now. The reason I sent field cards was because I had not an opportunity to write a letter, and I knew you would look for some post or other, hence these whiz-bangs. That is the name our boys give them. Fancy Douglas Menzies going into the Flying Corps. Of course he had to take something fancy, anything bar infantry with him. I suppose he will be taking out a commission in it soon. It will be terrible for Mrs Coventry if old Andrew goes. I did not think old chaps like him would be going. What does Dad say about it? It is really good of you, ma'am, sending parcels so often, and it must mean a great lot of work to you at the same time, to say nothing of expense. I do not know how much to thank you. It is really so good of you. All I can do is thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate them ever so much. We are, at present, having a short rest and in a fine trench. It's dry and warm. The saying of all is long may it last. I have no more news just now, so must close, but we'll write soon again. Hoping all of you are well, and with love to you all. Your loving son, John Alex. P.S. will write whenever I get a chance again. Dunmurray, Pitlochry, 23rd November 1917, Friday evening. My dear John Alex, we are very pleased to receive your nice postcard to Dad and letter to Netta, both written on the 17th and both received today and to hear that you are quite well and, above all, that you are out of the first-line trench. Since you wrote that letter, there has been a great advance of the British and heavy fighting between Bullcourt, Bopam, Cambrai, St Quentin direction, and we have been very, very anxious about you. There will be so many counter-attacks that will be not quiet thereabouts and for a considerable amount of time, and we almost earnestly hope that you have not been in any of the severe engagements. We will not likely hear from you till about the 1st of December any reliable news that you are all right. We had a visit from Jean McNaught tonight to ask about you and when we heard from you, etc. It was very good of her to come along in such a cold, stormy evening as this has been. Charlie Duncan is on home on leave just now. He arrived on Thursday night and has 10 days leave. They had a big party on his account last night and this morning, by first train at 7am, he and Alistair are away to Glasgow for a day or two on a visit to friends. Charlie has lots of cash and Dot says she means to have a good share of it. Dot was sent to the village yesterday for a lot of cookies etc for the tea splash and when Arnetta met her she was eating them as fast as she could. Charlie is very tall and very straight but very thin. He has not been home since last March when they were all out sledging down the brae. I have not sent off the parcel with your socks and sim it yet, but I will send it away early next week. I hope you have not been missing the many. There is a rumour in Pitlochry that Scotland's hotel is bankrupt, but it may only be a rumour and I hope that is only that. There is really no trade doing and there is a lot to keep up. I am afraid if this wretched war continues much longer that the half of our town will be bankrupt. You have no idea how quiet it is. There is no one moving about and the shops are without customers. Young Kerry will be 18 next week, I think, and is going off to join the Flying Corps, so Bob Whitehall will be left quite alone. Isn't that a big change? There are no message boys and no newspaper boys. I sent you a Perthshire advertiser and a courier yesterday, and today I sent you the journal. I hope you get them all right. You should have the parcel I sent you on the 9th before now, and I hope you will enjoy the contents. But I sent you a much better one on the 15th, and it will soon be due to... This advance and fighting may have hindered the delivery of them, but I trust not, and I also hope you are at leisure to enjoy them. In any of the lists we have, I don't see the London Scottish mentioned, but they may be in the English papers more. This has been a very stormy day here, sun shining but a perfect gale blowing and very cold. I hope weather is better with you again. I saw from the papers that you have had a lot of rain. During the big advance, rain fell for 24 hours. Wasn't that hard lines for the soldiers, who all had enough to contend with without having a rainstorm at the same time? I must now finish as my paper is full and it is late. With kindest love from each one of us and hoping you are all safe and well. With fondest kisses from your affectionate ma'am. Dunmurray, Pitlochry, 25th of November, 1917, Sunday evening. My dear John Alex, I was very pleased indeed to receive your very kind letter yesterday, the 24th, which you had written on Sunday the 18th. 
also by night's post on the 24th. We received a field card dated the 21st, which had come very quickly. We thank you very much for sending us both. After receiving your letter telling us you would not be able to write any letter for some time and that you would only send us field cards, and seeing from the papers that the British had made this big advance, we thought you were sure to be in it. So we were very glad to get the field card dated the 21st, which showed us you were well up till then and safe. We all hope and trust that you will get through it all safely and that there will soon be a lull again and a rest for all you ones. If you are busy or tired, don't bother writing any letters. Only send us a field card which lets us see you are safe and well. Anything else don't mind at all about just now. I just hope that it is not so cold with you as it is here. Yesterday and today have been very stormy and bitterly cold, and today there are heavy showers of snow every hour or so. It is all lying and the roads are very slippery. None of us could go to Moulin Church this way. The wind was so strong and driving the snow straight down the road from Benvraki. Miss Whitehall got as far as the point and came to a standstill with the wind. She looked round and saw her brother, Hugh, coming up our side, so she waited and after he made it up to her, they spoke for a second and she turned on our side and went, we suppose, to the Free Church. I do hope the heavy storm was spent before it reached you. You have enough hardships without having gales and frost added. I am just very sorry that you have not got your flannel slimmet and warmer socks, but I will send them on this week for a certainty. There is not very much going on here of any interest. All our interest is centred in where you are and what you are doing in your health and safety. How we all wish this mad war was over. Everyone is sick of it. Be sure to take as good care of yourself as you can and eat as much as you can to keep up your system when you are so much exposed and have so much fatigue. Dad has been writing you any news he has, so between us you will have heard everything that is fresh. Netta is to write to you very soon. Agnes Jane posted you a letter lately, so she is waiting for an answer, she says. I must stop for tonight, but we'll write it very soon again. With fondest love from each of us and warmest love and kisses from your affectionate ma'am.